What's going on guys? Welcome back to another Dead by Daylight video. Today I want to go over all the four year anniversary highlights that came out of that hour and a half, two hour stream. Everything except for the chapter itself. Of course we talked about Silent Hill many many times already, but there's a lot of stuff that came out of that stream that perhaps you may not even notice because you weren't there to watch it. So let's go step by step. Let's talk about everything that came out of this stream and why we should also be very excited for it. First of all, dedicated servers. When it comes to dedicated servers, they are planning to increase the rate at which the server runs, which should reduce the overall latency between player actions and the server reactions. However, there will be a minimum amount of latency present due to network limitations. Of course, we already all knew this. You know, you gotta have good internet if you wanna have less lag. That makes complete sense. They will also be adding a movement extrapolation, which will help to ensure that what the player sees is as close as possible as to what the server registers. So this will be good on both the server and the client side, validating critical interactions, which was things like with the environment, interruptions, attacks, etc. It will now ideally feel fair and as satisfying as possible for killers and for survivors. Honestly, I always thought that I would, this is the big thing. This is the big thing that needs to have. And dedicated servers need to be on par when it comes to how you want to play. And I always felt like Dead by Daylight was about three steps behind when it came to dedicated servers. I think a lot of people will agree with that. When it comes to latency issues, I don't think I've ever seen it so relevant within a video game other than Dead by Daylight. So hopefully they are starting to sharp things up here and within the next six months as they're hoping to get these things fixed out this year, we'll see a pretty balanced game when it comes to latency. They will also be making some matchmaking changes. The current matchmaking system uses ranks to match players, which is a time-based system that resets every month. We all know it but the upcoming system will instead use an algorithm to analyze the events and outcomes of each trial in order to define player skill, which will help to create a better and more fair matchmaking system. Uh, what's unique about this is that it's already been in place on live servers for the last several months, but it's just been in the background, not actually helping with matchmaking, but simulating that process and checking for skills with these players and seeing how it will line them up. Those results apparently looked very promising, so now they're just going to polish up some fine details and they'll have it come out within the upcoming months. That's very exciting to hear. Match, skill-based matchmaking has been a bit of a mess with Dead by Daylight. I'm sure, you know, some rank 15s have been tossed in to surviving with friends at red ranks. It's not very balanced, so hopefully this new system makes it more fair for everybody, including survivors and killers. Now, similar to last year's introduction of the Endgame Collapse, they will also be releasing a new feature along the same lines, which will affect the start of the match instead. Now, this is a topic that has been talked about a shit ton in the community. How do we slow down that base game? Because right now, it's really hectic. It's busy for both roles, all right? So for Survivor and Killer, it's just a really hectic time. How do you slow that down a little bit and basically kind of cut back on gen rushing a little bit as well? So they'll be looking to cleaning that up at the start of the match experience and making it as fun as possible for all parties involved, but no confirmation in terms of release date on that. But ideally, within this year, we'll see some early game changes. Of course, the big one that has come with a lot of mixed feelings, crossplay. Crossplay is 100% confirmed, and it will come with a couple different versions of it in different steps. First of all, surviving with friends or custom lobbies, you will now soon be able to invite your friends into parties from different platforms as well as bring them into custom lobbies that's across all platforms so that's gonna be interesting seeing pc players mixed with console players that's already be seeing some complaints on that in terms of balancing but we got to see how it goes then of course in the future they're going to make it where you can also cross plays open all the time so if you search for a game you'll be mixed up with different console players and PC players. The cross friends and cross play features will be introduced in two waves. Firstly, cross friends will be enabled on platforms which already support cross play, namely Steam and Windows Store. And then the console platforms, Xbox One, PS4 and Switch will be added to that pool later. Players on all five platforms will be able to play with one another. This is expected to be fully implemented by the end of this year. Cross progression on the other hand will not be but they are something that they are really, really interested in and they're currently in discussions with their partners. So hopefully we see that uh, cross progression to me, I think would be amazing if you, whatever platform you're playing on, you still progress your one account 
I think that'd be great. I really want to see that happen. I've been asking for that for a long, long time. So I'd like to see how it goes. And in terms of crossplay, hopefully the balancing issues aren't too bad because we talk about it all the time. You know, nurses on PC tend to be better. Uh, huntresses on PC tend to be better. So that could cause some balancing issues. But ideally, you'll have the ability to turn off crossplay as well, which they didn't confirm. But I'm just going to assume, like every other game that I've seen crossplay with, that you can just turn it off. So we'll see how that goes. They are also doing an overall graphical update. This includes asset changes for a lot of things um, all across the map, including pallets and generators and lights and shacks. And one thing I thought was really cool about it was that killer shacks will now fit the environment of each map. We're, they're starting to see that transition happen, but now every map sometime in the future over a the next period of time here, will all have killer shacks that match their environment, which I you know, just more immersive. I think that's nice. And of course, Dead by Daylight has to do everything they can to stay with the time here. It's a four year old game already. And now things like Unreal Engine 5 are coming out and new consoles. They got to try to step those graphics up a little bit. Although I'm that kind of person that says graphics don't really matter. But of course, you still want to fit in with the big dogs that are going to be coming out in these new gen, um, this next gen consoles. So graphical update looks pretty nice. Everything looks really sharp and the assets that they did show look great so far so i'm excited to see those implemented in the game over time and then last but not least the new chapter did come with legendary skins as well legendary outfits are a new type of cosmetic which is being introduced with the silent hill chapter they will change not only a character's clothes but the character themselves the first legendary skin to be introduced alongside the silent hill chapter will be lisa garland which allows players to transform cheryl into lisa when equipping it I find this extremely interesting because how far can you run with this? Uh, how can you use your license to bring in new characters like that just as skins? So can you do that per se Freddy Krueger and turn him into OG Freddy Krueger and maybe get Robert England in the mix? It, it's kind of things like that I'm really interested in uh, cosmetically. So I find that pretty cool. We'll see where they go with it. What's next? Obviously, if you're going to take the time to incorporate something a whole new legendary outfit you might as well bring it to other characters as well so we'll see what they do with it but that is all the highlights from the four year anniversary stream for dead by daylight please let me know your thoughts in the comments below i can't wait to see what year five brings for dead by daylight seems like we have a lot of exciting things in the future and i'm already excited for june 16th for the silent hill chapter to go public can't wait to see console players rocking it as well it's going to be a good time, but hey, let me know your thoughts, comments below, but that's going to wrap up today's video. If you enjoyed, make sure you drop a like and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. And of course, as always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.